I'm very honored to be closing this conference day with you together. And I sincerely hope that you've had a great time until now, that you've learned lots of stuff. Um, and um, one of the things that I'm most excited about is when people develop software, but also do it out of like a hobby because they are motivated because they just like it so much. And that's something I want to talk about today. Uh, when I combine my hobby, which is uh, making music with developing software, which is also kind of my hobby, then uh, most of the time, great things happen, things that make me very happy, but also great work is achieved. That's what, what I wanted to talk to you about today. So when music and software come together, but also this conference has focused a lot on, uh, on sustainability and how we can make a difference with our code in, in our, to our planet and the planet of the future. So actually we're going to talk today about when music and sustainable software uh, come together. And um, these two fields, making music and developing software or developing sustainable software are two of my favorite hobbies. And well, at first they seem like two very different things, but they are actually more alike than you might think. Uh, I've put a list of, ver of verbs on the slides, for example, um, and all these verbs can be associated with software very easily because we are able to create our software. We can develop software, program software, craft software, write software, publish software, produce software, and of course, uh, we have to run software, which is the, the thing our customer wants, of course. If it's not running, why would the customer pay for it? But all these verbs would also would all go very well with music because we can create our music, we can develop music, program music. I mean, a DJ is essentially programming his or her music. We can craft music, write music, publish music, produce music, and running music is the kind of music you need when you go out for your morning run and you need your 165 beats per minute music mix. So this example shows that music and software are very much alike. Uh, and it's also because in order to produce both of them, creativity is needed. So if you're a musician or if you're a software developer, you're not a factory worker who uh, does a tiny part of a conveyor belt process or who does the same task over and over again. It's actually the opposite. We are craftspeople. We shape our products, we sculpt our products, we redo our products sometimes uh, until we are happy with it or until the customer is happy with it. And when you're motivated by your craftsmanship, um, you only allow yourself to stop working on it once you're happy with it. Lots of uh, composers rewrote their uh, music pieces until they thought this is the music piece that I wanted to write in the first place. So I've mentioned already that music and software are two favorite hobbies of mine. Now I have managed to turn one of these hobbies into a career. And during this talk, you can make up your mind about which hobby is my career and which one is not. You know, after you've heard the music and seen the software. But I guess the bottom line is, I love it when music and software come together right now over me. And each time this happens, I feel like the happiest person on earth. So in what ways do music and software come together? Well, I can think of a number of ways. Let's demonstrate one possible way with a code example. Now, I came across this code example on Twitter some time ago, and when I saw it, it immediately made me very happy. In fact, being a musician, I literally can't stop myself from singing along. Is this the real life? Is this just fantasy? Caught in a landslide, no escape from reality. Open your eyes, look up to the skies and see I'm just a poor boy, I need no sympathy Because I'm easy come, easy go Little high, little low Any way the wind blows doesn't really matter to me to me. I wish I could stay here to finish this song, but we have more songs to sing and more software to talk about. Um, now this conference uh, 
has scheduled this talk as a small talk or uh, or uh, an end keynote, but other conferences call this a lightning talk, one of these short talks. And the name of the lightning talk is also a reason why the last song I was singing is appropriate by Queen, because of this part in the song. Thunderbolt and lightning, very, very frightening me. Galileo, Galileo. Ah, you know this song. Uh, we don't have time to sing it in full. Um, but on that note, here is another classic hit that I got from Twitter. Hey Jude, your make is bad. You should fix that compiler error. Remember to let it search the root path. Then you can start to make it better. But maybe you simply hate the Beatles and prefer a quite a different music genre. <laughs> The class is the fall, 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 the class the is the fall, the class the fall, the class is the fall, the class is the fall, the class is the fall, Yeah, it feels good, but I will admit that this is a geeky one and maybe a bit over the top. Why should we mess with these original lyrics at all? Surely tons of popular songs can be applied to software engineering already without altering anything. So let's embark on a small musical journey throughout a typical software development process. Why should we do that? Because I think it will be fun because we're here anyway and it, because me, it makes me very happy. And who knows? Maybe we will discover loads of songs that have been misinterpreted by the masses for years because everyone seems to think that in the end all songs are about love. Ew, you know what? These people are all wrong because all songs are actually about software development. Yes, all of them. And I'll prove it to you. So let's start out. And of course, a typical software development process starts with gathering requirements. Now, whenever a product owner comes to me with some requirements, my music addicted brain immediately goes, hey, slow it down. What do you want from me? What do you want from me? Yeah, I'm afraid of what you're gonna ask. Oh, what do you want from me? What do you want from me? Now, requirements are very rarely immediately clear. I mean, not after the product owner has explained them just once. So in a lot of cases, these requirements need to be refined, right? And in general, I'm really eager for some refinement work. Why? Because it makes me very happy to sing to my product owner. Just don't give up, I'm working it out. So appropriate, I love it. Now suppose the requirements were refined. The story was made ready and it is placed on the sprint backlog. This means we can start implementing the requirements. Now, when I'm coding, a lot of songs just happen to pop up in my head. For example, when I'm calling a method called stop, my head immediately fills with hammer time. Can't touch this. You know, my head does this every single time. It's a bit like a reflex because it happens instantly. A reflex, and I can't really stop it. Oh, it's a reflex. I'm effectively a victim here. Can't help it. A reflex. Don't you feel sorry for me? I can't even turn it off. Or every, di every time I'm doing some conditional logic, this happens. Hey, I just met you. And this is crazy, but here's my number. So call me, maybe. 
because you don't have any idea if that method is going to be called. You don't have any clue. Or for example, when handling exceptions. Today is gonna be the day that they're gonna throw it back to you. By now you should have somehow realized what you gotta do. Well, what you gotta do is handle this exception, you silly. And please handle it properly this time because this is dreadful stuff. Now, I have admitted that my brain is addicted to music. It didn't happen overnight. It's been that way for as long as I can remember. It's just that the majority of things that happen to me immediately remind me of a song. And when that happens, I can't stop myself from playing it and singing along. I drive my coworkers insane. So I suspect that it's clear to you already. Now the question is, should I be worried? Is this crazy? <laughs> Does that make me crazy? Does that make me crazy? Does that make me crazy? Possibly. Now I've looked into it and researched this song inception thing a bit, and as it turns out, everyone has this ability in some way. So I'm by no means special. For example. Does your brain tell you after hearing this? I really wish you were in a physical conference right now because you would see the first half of the room do eyes, eyes, baby, the other half of the room do uh, Because it turns out there are two types of people. So I'm, I'm quite sure you've, you've been doing eyes, eyes, baby, right? Yeah, the ones who go eyes, eyes, baby, the first type of, type of people, the second type of people are the ones who go pressure, pushing down on me, pushing down on you, no man asks for, under pressure. So we have established you also have some experience with this song inception thing, so I'm not crazy. Also, now you also know what to do when asked during a job interview if you can put them under pressure. You know, this interview would ask for an interview question like, that's great, so you can do Java, COBOL, Python, this, and you can do Haskell. That's so great, we use all five of these languages here. Also, this is the question, can you perform under pressure? And you can just go back to you know, and break into song. Pressure! I think they simply won't be able to resist. Moving on to the code again, whenever I write a switch statement, this Happen. I'll spread my wings and I'll learn how to fly. I'll do what it takes till I touch the sky. I'll make a wish, take a chance, make a change, and break away. Very important. Don't forget your break state. So nowadays we are all T-shaped developers, so we're not afraid to pull a little front end work, right? JavaScript, CSS, works. Now, last week I heard a story that reminded me how important front end work can be. A colleague of mine works on a text application that enables people to fill out an application text reduction. The application form didn't have any client side validation, no user validation whatsoever, because they said will be checked in the back office anyway. So you could enter any data in any field you want. Well, it turned out that the back office did detect errors and handled them by sending a physical letter to the person that entered the form data. And it just said, please, please modify your text application because this is the data that you entered this fault. So that's a very unnecessary letter that's being sent. Because had there been validation in place, there, the letter wouldn't be needed at all. So this is a place in our software development work where we can make the planet a better place, more sustainable. Help save the planet if you're in trouble. I think proper input validation to make sure that letters are not being sent by the backend if they are not needed. And please help us make sure the forest don't shrink even further. It makes me think of this song. Leave paradise and put up a parking lot with a pink hotel boutique and a swinging hotspot. 
Now, 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 don't it always seem to go That you don't know what you got till it's gone I pay for a dice and put up a parking lot Ooh, ba, ba, ba. Ooh, ba, ba. I took all the trees and put them in a tree museum And he charged the people a dollar and a half to see them No, 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 don't it always seem to go That you don't know what you got till it's gone Leave paradise and put up a parking lot so let's assume at this point in time, both your back end and your front control is pretty much done. So the next step is reversing the control, right? Well, I, I'll be hoping that you have committed back to it. Let's assume that we're starting the reversing control right now. Now, the lyrics to the song I, I was singing at the song track, the Kelly Clarkson uh, Breakaway, contains really inspiring stuff for commit sessions. I think it's perfectly fine for you. See? Make a wish, take a chance, make a change. I especially like this last one. It's fantastic. It's generic. You can use it anywhere. No need to think about difficult commitments anymore. Of course, not. Of course after our commitment, we create a new push. Unless you're a really into it. Let's assume that you're. for this. I'm quite sure almost everyone in this virtual room has a song for this. That one song that you secretly hum each time you type git push. For a lot of people it could be <laughs> push it. <laughs> push it. Baby, you know, and for others, it may be this one if you're a really fan of 80s movies. Push it to the limit, limit, past the point of no return. You've reached the top, but still, you gotta learn how to keep it. Stage five is debugging. Let's face it, nobody's perfect, right? So bugs will be found in your code. And of course, the most important question is, well, what, what do you think the most important question is? Maybe how many bugs have been found or how can we reproduce the situations? I don't think these are any of these are the right questions. When bugs are found in your code, the most important question is, what song will play inside your head when it happens? At least according to me, it's the most important song. Well, when the user files a defect in your ticketer system, what would your most re mature and responsible re response be? I think it's denial. The first step of any healthy bug fixing process and to be fair, also a bit of determination, but both responses are addressed by the next song. They told him, don't you ever come around here? Don't wanna see a face, you better disappear. The fire's in your eyes and their words are really clear, so beat it. But you wanna be bad, just beat it. Beat it, beat it, beat it. No one wants to be defeated. Shall we not forget? It's trying to show fight. It doesn't matter who's wrong or right, just beat it. Just beat it. Really hard not to continue this one also. When the bug is persistent and denial no longer works, we need a special bug song to start a bug fishing. Yes, we are in desperate need of a special bug song. So without further ado, here is the bug song. When you try your best but you don't succeed Or when you get what you want but not what you need when you feel so tired that you can't sleep Stuck in reverse Lights will guide you home And ignite your bones And I will try to fix you. 
let's fix all them bugs. Now, if Fix You by Coldplay is the debug song, then what would be a good debugging song? You know, when you're in the middle of a scenario and checking the breakpoints. Funny coincidence, it's by the same band, and the song is called The Scientist. Now, these lyrics are so accurate. I think in a past life, Chris Martin was a software developer. <laughs> there simply is no other explanation, because these lyrics have everyone's typical debugging session written all over it. Listen. I was just guessing at numbers and figures, pulling the puzzles apart. Questions of science, science and progress, don't speak as loud as my heart. Tell me you love me, come back and haunt me. Oh, when I rush to the star, running in circles, chasing our tails, coming back as we are. Nobody said it was easy. Oh, it's such a shame for us to part. Nobody said it was easy. No one ever said it would be so hard. I'm going back to the start. Oof, and that happens a lot in a debugging session, right? Going back to the start. Now, after fixing the bug, I need a commit message again, and I usually use the bridge from Fix You for the commit message. Tears stream down your face. Here it is. I promise you I will learn from my mistakes. Famous last words. The final stage in this talk is operations. So imagine the software we've created has been deployed to production. Yes. And we have applied some monitoring tools. Now, when you discover a process is stuck somehow, you need to restart it, right? Of course, you want this to be done automatically or handled by the cloud. For Let's, for, let's assume for the sake of this talk, you have to do it manually. What do you do? You just end the faulty process and start a new one, right? We're killing it the name of Great song. Um, sadly, sometimes ending a process is not permitted or something has gone wrong or something. So you have to use sudo kill dash nine, right? And I call this the rage command because it has the sudo in it, it has the dash nine in it, because it feels really good when listening to hard rock or metal. Sudo kill dash nine, ha! And because when I need this command, I get angry. Not at people per se, but mostly at my laptop. So angry at my machine, like, like the band name. And it fits also the following lyrics perfectly, the sudo kill dash nine, because what does this command mean? And now you do what they told ya. 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 Ah. Yeah, you don't want to work with me when I'm executing the rage command. Um, we're nearing the finish line now. And I feel like you folks deserve a word of appreciation because you've stuck with me for the last 20 minutes which had some unconventional content in it, to say the least. The person who introduced me said, this is, this is a quite unusual talk. Well, yeah, it was. So as a token of my appreciation to say thank you for st sticking with me, please accept the following musical poem. I call it For the Brave Souls. Now for the brave souls who got this far, you are the chosen ones, our valiant knights who toil away without rest to become a better version of yourselves by attending conferences. To you, kings and queens of men, I say this. Never gonna give you up, never gonna let you down, never gonna run around and desert you, never gonna make you cry, never gonna say goodbye, never gonna tell a lie and hurt you. I had just, just had to do that, couldn't stop myself. Please forgive me from the bottom of my heart. Um, all joking aside, when I, at the end of the software development process, helped to deliver good software, with all bugs fixed, and I helped to make the world a bit more sustainable, and also my customers happy with what we've done, 
I feel on top of the world every single time. And that's why I like software and music both equally. I'll take it in, but don't look down. Cause I'm on top of the world. Eh? I'm on top of the world. Eh? Waiting on this for a while now. Paying my dues to the dirt. I've been waiting to smile. Eh? Been holding it in for a while. Eh? I'll take it with me if I can. Been dreaming of this since a child. I'm on top of the world. Okay, now if you would want to reach out to me, here's how to do it. If you like my technical views, there's more of that at my Twitter profile. You can tweet me at, at Hanotify uh, or at my website, hano.codes. If you like the talk, I keep a list of speaking engagements there and I also blog occasionally. If you just like the music, I created a Spotify playlist so you can listen to the songs uh, that I, I perform today while you're working. And finally, if you just like the music, that's also okay. Visit my SoundCloud profile. You can hear more about my music. Um, so let's conclude. This was all I had for you today, folks. I'm really thankful that you uh, took the time to listen to me. Thanks very much, Devok Ukraine. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. It was very, very, very fun talk and very nice music. You're welcome.